remarks uh, were actually going to be done uh, by one of the most prominent members also of our advisory board. I'm very happy that she's here with us today and she will be giving also her opening keynote address. Uh, let me, allow me to say a few words of introduction about the Honorable Eka Takashvili, former Vice Minister of Georgia, State Minister of Georgia for Reintegration, and former Foreign Minister of Georgia. The Honorable Eka Takashvili holds a master's degree in international human rights law from Notre Dame Law School, a certificate in human rights lawyering and human rights advocacy from Oxford University, and a diploma from law from Tbilisi uh, State University. Before entering into politics, Ms. Tekishvili was deputy chief of party of IRES, Georgia, leading the programs on the rule of law, legal aid, and human rights. She previously served as national security advisor to the president of Georgia and was the secretary for National Security Council of Georgia, heading the national strategic review process. Ms. Tekishvili is the former minister of foreign affairs of Georgia, former prosecutor general of Georgia, as well as the former vice prime minister and state minister of Georgia for reintegration. She's currently president of the Georgian Institute for Strategic Studies. The lecture topic that she's chosen today is the following, nation branding, key for the success of states in transition. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a very, very warm welcome for the Honorable Ms. Eka Tegashvili. Thank you. Thank you, Mark, uh, for a very kind uh, introduction. And I'm very pleased to be here with you. It's my second time with, with the Institute here and having this opportunity of having conversation with very interesting uh, audience like, uh, like this one. So I, I know that my time is limited. It's about 30 minutes that I have for the introduction. So I'll try to be brief in the introduction so that if there are any questions that you might have, we could have possibilities of conversation. But then as Mark has mentioned, any time throughout the event, obviously I will be very much open to discuss anything that would be of interest to you when it comes to uh, issues related with a key address, keynote address, or anything else with relation to my country, region, or something of your interest in that sense. So states in transition and how much of a national branding could be key really to the success um, that, that the countries have as the primary political goals in that process. And to give you a bit of a flavor of what we mean under that when we speak about the experience of a small country like Georgia, Georgia was part of the Soviet Union, so when Georgia gained independence, we were not even on the map of political relationships in the way that there would have been awareness of the country. The first time when I started to travel, uh, being a student initially at the time and then in my professional career and in, even at that point initially, even the knowledge about the, the fact that there was country Georgia, not the state in the United States, which is again called Georgia, was, was, was an issue for a nation branding, that there was the state, small state, independent nation, and then we've been called Georgia, and then what we were all about. So that uh, when you translate from the type of an experience, you, when you are part of that big hole, like the Soviet Union, uh, the number one uh, challenge for the country and opportunity of, at the same time is to put out the story about yourself in such a way that you start national branding basically for the country in the 20th century at the end of it, whereas you already have many, 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 many actors uh, in, in the global scene which are already well established and then the national branding really encompasses more for streamlining of what could be the new elements of the, of the branding rather than an initial start up of creating the even basic understanding about the country. So. Uh, uh, the first years after the independence of the country were very chaotic, very very uh, complex with uh, wars that we've experienced as well um, in two regions of Georgia and then one civil war in the country. So additional challenge emerged after almost a decade of, from the independence that the country has started to be associated more with, with war if you would have had a bit of an uh, questioning an international scene, what was the first association that even politis politicians would have had about the country? It would have been war, it would have been economic difficulties, it would have been corruption, and it would have been even organized crime being a huge problem for the country. So a very mixed picture, very unattractive in that sense. Still uh, a bit of a remnant or legacy of, uh, of a beautiful country, good culture, good destination for tourism, but then that was overshadowed in many ways with all the difficulties that country has experienced in the first years of the independence. So in 2003, when the revolution happened in the country, a peaceful one, and then the power change has happened, we started to think, obviously, in, 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 in strategically about the development of the country so that we would have met all the requirements of the people who have brought uh, the new government into the power and was, were, were the main engine of the political transition. 
And, uh, and then it became obvious from the beginning that if the process of transition of a country, which was at that time, frankly speaking, bankrupting all, all components of the political bankruptcy, we had to pay a lot of attention in parallel to what would have been the nation branding of the country. So that the actions that would have been directed in essence to the reform of the country would have been accompanied with the good understanding how we would put out information about that to the outside world, engage outside world and our partners in that process so that the process of reform of the country would have been inclusive in that sense. It would have been a product of mutual investment of our partners into the development of the country. And with that, the nation branding, a new branding, so to say, for the country would overshadow the previous uh, elements of, of knowledge about the country and would create a new, new understanding what the country Georgia was all about. And if you do the nation branding of that type, our experience tells that it always needs to be very strategic and it needs to be always connected uh, strongly to the overall process of political and economic development of the country. Nation branding cannot be artificial. It cannot be based on lies. It needs to be based on the actual reality of the development. But it needs to be very persistent and very, very active when it comes to the communication with the outside world so that the actual goals of this transition are well met with that. And we speak about the actual goals of the transition in which the country was that it was the peaceful democratic development when it comes to the political development of the country, fight against the corruption, economic growth, and then a create, creation of the situation when the foreign investment would have been attracted in the country, and then creating a niche for the country, basically, for a small country, by, for some perhaps non-competitive when it comes to the investment community, interest around the world to be attractive for the investment, to be easy uh, to create an atmosphere where it would have been easy to do business, transparent to, the, to do the business, and would have been, um, would have been uh, the, the situation where one would enjoy security when it comes to the freedom of the, of the challenges associated with the, with the crime or shadow economy or anything like that, and then with the, with the democratic freedoms when it comes to the individual freedoms as well. And obviously, one of the main reasons for us, uh, one of the main goals as well for us when it comes to economic development was to recreate this tourism destination branding of the country as well, with all the uh, natural uh, capacities that the Georgia had for that, but very much lack of any infrastructure in a normal sense when it comes to the tourism related infrastructure. So these main goals were the guiding principles for the nation branding for the country. And as I've said, while doing the business of transforming the country, we've been very actively engaged in terms of creating all the processes that would help creation of that type of a nation branding of the country. After the nine years of, of, of the work that has been done throughout the process of reforms, and no reform is obviously a perfect process, and then no reform is a process without any mistake. So it's always a struggle to, to, to create the positive dimension and then create positive awareness about these positive dimensions, but then ch deal with the challenges of, of the uh, created in the perceptions that are related with the mistakes that are taken, obviously, in the process of reforms as well. So it's always a very, very, very complex process. Process. And then not to mention again the biggest challenge that we faced, it was in 2008 when we've had uh, invasion of Russia into Georgia, when again the story of war became a, the predominant component associated with Georgia. So once again we've started to be in the situation that when anybody would know about Georgia, would talk about the Georgia, the first element would have been, well, it is the country uh, Russia fought the war with, and then what is the situation right now? What is the situation with Russia? How much is a challenge? So for us, for the country which remains to be 20% of the country under Russian occupation at this moment, invest investment, attraction of investment uh, obviously had an additional challenge because for any investor to think about any project when it comes to the business project in the country where you have that problem, obviously you have to ask the question, is it secure for me to make this investment and then how better off I will be go making that step. So it was obviously a huge challenge that we had to deal with and to create situation in the rest of the country in such a way that investors would have had an assurance that yes, it is safe to make this investment, yes, there is a profitable um, project if I would engage in that project as a, as a business person and then with all 
all the connectivity with international actors being included in the development of Georgia. There was a bit of a soft power safeguard for the development of the country that was balancing out the deficiency of the hard power, uh, lack of hard power security, basically, when it comes to the situation in Georgia. So the achievements that, that have been achieved throughout this process are the following, basically, that we are now hopefully at the situation where more people rather than less people know that the country of Georgia as such exists. So when you travel somewhere, you are not uh, you're not having a comment, basically, when you say that you are Georgian, that, well, you don't sound Georgian, in a sense, because you don't sound Southern American, in that sense, South and, not Southern American in terms of Latin America, but then in terms of USA, Southern America, in that sense. And... Um, and then there is quite a bit of a knowledge. I've been, I've been myself engaged uh, very actively as a foreign minister and afterwards as well in international relations, even in very remote parts of the world with which we've just started to have intense bilateral relations, uh, like in Latin America or in African countries as well. There is this knowledge about the story of Georgia transforming itself from this post-Soviet past into the modern European development that there is this seal of developing country in a democratic way, that the economic situation transformed dramatically where this country, which was sunk in corruption, was named lately as number one fighting corruption according to organizations like Transparency International, Corruption Barometer, and then uh, uh, to, the, to the polls that they have conducted, it's less than 3% of the Georgian population that have actually encountered, according to these polls, an occasion where they, they were requested or being asked to be engaged in corrupt-related activities. And this is an achievement that has become a foundation, basically, for the economic development of the country. Economic policies that have been enacted in that process, flat taxes, reduction of the bureaucratic burden over the, over the, over the businesses, e-governance that has become part of the good governance of the country when it comes to all the state agencies that are delivering services to the to their constituencies, whether it could be civil registries, public registries, registration of businesses in the country, filing of the tax administrative documents. It's all electronic and, and it's very quick and it's very transparent and it eradicates even possibilities of corruption in that sense. So, and then a, a lot of emphasis that the government was doing on, on investment related activities actually bought us, the small country, again, 20% of which is under occupation right now. At this stage, we're according to the World Bank, we are on the ninth place in terms of the doing uh, easiness of doing business, and uh, we've been in the 170s or somewhere down the road in that respect. And and then this narrative as a nation branding is obviously still in the in the in the uh, stage of formation. But then still, when we speak about the uh, business communities, when we speak about the politics, when we speak about the general um, societies around the world, there is more of an understanding of that type now about the country, which again is, is process in transition in its own way of creating that branding, that it's a country that is a reformer, it's a country that has done a lot in terms of fighting corruption, it's still country in transition, we're not yet there in, in at the final stage of destination of maturity of that development, it's extremely safe by the way, to be there, and that's a predominant view for, in, 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 by all, for all organizations or the partners that are in Georgia. It's completely free and safe being in Georgia. And again, it's, it's, we've uh, maintained and uh, strengthened, I would hope again, the, one of the elements of our nation branding, that it's extremely developed uh, culturally as a country, diverse and interesting from that perspective, and a very good place to visit in terms of the tourism as well. A lot has been done in terms of the infrastructural development for that purpose in the country. It's still in process in, in, in happening, basically. But then the growth of the tourists in Georgia has been dramatically big, and that, that's in its own way a factual indication that the story is out there when it comes to uh, growth of the tourism potential of the country. And then we had a brief chat now with, with, with our colleague in, for Montenegro, and then it's, it's already a country which has achieved a lot in terms of nation branding when it comes to the tourism uh, development and uh, the good elements that we have taken as a note from that experiences as well. It's a learning process, but the main message that in this short address that I wanted to deliver basically is that for the countries, especially for the countries in transition, I would say that for any country these days in the global economy and then global uh, 
global life internationally, nation branding is, is key in many ways, but then for countries in transition, for the goals of the transition to be well achieved, it, especially for the small countries, it is absolutely essential to have a clear perspective how you strategize around the nation branding, how you accompany your actual work of transition with the action in parallel of, of having in mind the nation branding activities being embedded in the whole process of transition, because ultimately when we speak about the economic development, political development, cultural development of the country as well, if you're not integrated with the outside world and if you don't encourage outside of uh, outside world basically being engaged with you in your own development, these days it is impossible to be successful in your own development. It's all interrelated to, to the highest degree one could have imagined historically as well at this point of time. So um, in a way, nation branding is part of national security as well for the small countries because as much as you are part of the community of states you strategically think you belong to, for us it's the European community, Euro-Atlantic community of states, then it's again, it's the strategic soft power, but then very important development of the country that creates uh, much more of a guarantee when it comes to overall security of the country rather than predominantly orientation on the hot power type of the security development of the country without degrading importance of that, but then still. So again, that's, that's about it that I wanted to give you without overburdening you in this short uh, address so with too much of an information and I'm open, obviously, if we have time to address one or two questions. Shall we go?